Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So as we started in the beginning of this discussion that there are a lot of changes happening and how to cope up with change is, is a scary process to begin with from these description like the uh, life cycle of the competitive advantage and the systematic way of harnessing the transient competitive advantage. We can see a science behind the process, we can look at there is a more predictable process. If we adopt, we can tap something which is difficult to predict. There are so many case studies and we are going to discuss about the case studies where the strategy for transient advantage are very well harnessed by some of the players. There is, we see that Walmart is known for the retail and now Walmart is uh, coming up with the healthcare and even they are, uh, uh, even they have launched the phone cards. Vodafone has launched M-Pesa in Africa for the electronic transfer. Vodafone otherwise is known as, not known as a banking organization and Walmart is not known as a healthcare organization. They have entered into the field because they have realized a fact that competitive advantage and transient competitive advantage is no bound by industry. But we need to identify the arena where we would like to play, play it. There is another set of example of the Cognizant and ITC. We know that Indian companies are fast losing out on the labor arbitrage. That labor arbitrage is coming down, the salaries are going up and as a result of that either they have to move up in the uh, sophistication of their project or they will be out of business because just simply labor arbitrage is not going to give them the complete advantage. How one organization has dealt with that is an example we are going to look at. This example is of the Cognizant and Cognizant started an initiative called Job of the Future. What simply they are doing is that they have formed the teams about some industries. These teams very systematically study the industry, look at the trends, identify the probable changes in the years to come and its impact on the process and systems of the existing organizations. And after this thorough understanding about the industry, they go to the business organizations in those industry with these studies saying that your industry is going to look like this and not going to remain same and will be differently operating and these are the way it will be operate it will be operating are you ready for that and if you are not ready for that we will be happy to partner with you in this process this is an amazing initiative and as a result of that they are able to build the competency across many industries and have won so many uh, projects in different industries. This is one example of the identifying the themes not being wedded with few processes which they are expert in. Another example is, is ITC, the full form of the ITC is the Indian tobacco company. First they drop the name of the full form and then they use the term IT, ITC as the proper noun, not as an acronym and they realize that going on the, the tobacco business is not going to remain the same, people are becoming more conscious and this business by nature is hurting people, uh, the health of the, it is adversely affecting the health of the people. They use their existing uh, distribution capabilities and they looked at the agro business as a natural outcome 
as a natural progression of their business and agro business at two levels at the retail at the level of retail wherein they were offering many products and catering to the segments within the fmcg which were underserved like packaged food at the same time they started the another networking in the name of each of all where they were help they were working with the farmers to identify the market dynamic uh, the environment the climatic conditions and so many other things and kind of partnering with the farmers in the in their agriculture work. so these two examples suggest that setting the broader theme and let people experiment around that is one of the ways of harnessing the transient advantage there is another set of examples there is one company which is not technically very very sophisticated but has has to offer something very interesting to learn this organization is of the bramble in the australia they are into the agri business and when they looked at what their clients are struggling with and where they can create value they identified their clients which were the uh, stores the retail stores for them unloading and unpacking the material from a from the big containers and transferring those into the smaller containers and the smaller cell was something which was very time consuming and they thought that if something can be handled around that that will be a great benefit to them bramble did a simple innovation they looked at the store capacity they looked at the store dimensions of their retail partners and they did that packaging of that size in the on the farms itself so the retail partners have to just transfer their stuff directly to the store and the store uh, kind of containers it was a simple innovation but they made very deep inroads with the large number of retail stores and that helped them to establish their leadership position what it says is that we need to focus on the experiences and solutions to the problems if we have to harness the transient advantage there are examples of the organizations which are based on building the community so for example there is a software company intuit which is not providing the finished softwares but it is providing the services and enough opportunity for people to do the tinkering and do the innovation on the organization platform itself another example is of the trade advisor which provides the place for people to interact and the community itself became self sustainable and the supporting feature so building a strong network also is a very important feature of adding to the transient advantage now we see airbnb is also not only providing the information about the uh, places for stay but they are focusing on building the airbnb community and uh, one of the features of airbnb community is that if you go and stay with the airbnb partners they not only provide you the place which is generally very economical particularly for the large groups of the travelers they also provide the basic information about the site seeing about the convenient ways of traveling about the places where they must go about the places which which may be of the different choice for the different category of the travelers now these are something which is difficult to harness from the uh, websites until person visits that place and airbnb is providing that service to their partners free of cost so in that process in that way airbnb is moving beyond just provider or aggregator of this space to a player which is giving which is helping the travelers to get the best experience of their journeys and travels so this is one way based on certain principles when organizations build a strong network 
they are able to generate value which is beyond the transactional nature and that gives them the trans transient advantage there are ways of disengaging with the business also in a in a smarter way so for example netflix in a very quick way they moved out of the video cd businesses and rental businesses and moved to the internet businesses there are studies suggesting that netflix could have done it little in a more phased manner because like organizations are not able to shift from one way of this doing business to the another way of doing business all the customers also do not adopt change in a with a similar speed so the smart players those who are operating on the transient advantage don't disengage with the uh, less value adding service or products very quickly they do it in a phased manner so that they can keep harnessing the advantage till the time it is available and at the same time they keep building the capability to generate business to, to generate value in different and novel ways and that help them to transition from one form of business to the other form of business so we need so organizations need to learn the healthy disengagement and another time tested way is not easy but it is uh, found to be the core of any organization which has not only survived but thrived in the transient advantage phase are like examples of 3m and wipro 3m is a very off coded example where we know that they have a simple uh, norm to get the one third of their revenue and profit from the product developed in last 5 years so developing product is not the product project in itself developing product and processes is a way of doing business we see that many organizations get some jackpot they launch a product and it becomes very successful very rarely it happens that they launch very few product and one of them become jackpots generally organizations have to keep trying things and keep developing things out of that something become more uh, beneficial so it is not one product becoming hot innovation or one innovation becoming highly value adding organizations have to operate on the funnel of the innovation where innovation takes place at the various levels at the product level at the process level at the business models level and lot of conversations about the innovation happening lot of initiatives are taken out of that few initiatives become jackpot and they become very very successful that's how it works uh, for an organization to be innovative in the real sense so systematic early innovation iteration and learning has no substitute an organization which is aiming at harnessing the transient advantage has to have a not innovation as initiative but innovation as a system there is there has to be a process for iteration and constant learning from those iterations an organization like wipro has a hierarchy not only for the uh, marketing and the product but they have hierarchy for the ideation as well there is a chief ideation officer and there are some ideation committees at different levels which are the forums where people can submit their ideas about the innovative businesses and products and the scan scanning happens at the different levels and the most promising ideas in fact get the support of the organization to be started with there are lot of spin offs of these projects many new companies have started and we there is no it is not surprising that if we look at in terms of the diaspora how many business leaders have come out of wipro uh, out of many software organizations wipro stands out in that which has provided a large number of ceo to the industry comparing to any other peers in the it industry in india so innovation is not a matter of the project but it's a matter of culture and the process 
that requires a certain types of leadership which help in building the innovation process which in turn results in the innovative products and services so here i would like to give a different type of innovation and how it gives a greater profitability and productivity innovation can happen at different levels and it has differential impact on the profitability and the time requirement is different in the different innovation for example there are disruptive innovations about new product tailoring and development of the new product application innovation product innovation the innovation can be in the process innovation can be on the marketing business model or more structural innovations so innovation is not only about developing a product but also involves process marketing business models what this model suggests and what the study of the moore suggests which was published in the hbr in 2004 that the profitability the investment is generally more in developing new products whereas the profitability gain is much higher in the process and marketing innovation if you look at the retail uh, e-commerce revolution in india it is less of about the offering new product and more about the process it can be in many other industries where it is not the product per se but the delivery model or the process or the marketing uh, innovation create the highest value so from lab to market to ecosystem means uh, in 60s and 70s major defining things the focus was more on the technological innovation the technologist were doing the innovation and it was at the technological level in 80s and 90s the level became at the marketing level and today it has become the board board level and that's where a lot of innovations happen because it is not only about the new product but also about the new business model and when we combine it and this is like a 10 year old or 15 year old study if we see today it is actually again again technology combined with marketing and boardroom which is uh, redefining the innovation space in the chain space in the world there is one another uh, important concept which we need to discuss in today's class is value innovation value innovation is one another way of looking at the systematic way of bringing about the change process value innovation is based on a logic that innovation should not be focused on an internal strategy and resources it should be focused on the customers experience and if we look at any product customer experience is contributed and customer value is created through different factors we need to look at what are the factors really valuable for the customer so they give these th these examples on how organizations can engage into the value innovation which, which can become the driver for them a successful change this one example is of a cosmetic industry if we look at the body shop and if we look at the established cosmetic industry player we'll we'll see that their price packaging <coughs> high technology cosmetic science glamour image natural ingredient and representation of the healthy living they give different level of value the, these two players give different level of value to these factors so established uh, cosmetic industry player and the leaders were giving more relative value to price lot of value to packaging lot of value to the high tech cosmetic science and almost very small 
very less attention to the natural ingredients when this industry was going through this process body shop did not give they give less attention to price packaging cosmetic and the glamour image and then they give most attention to the natural ingredient and that fits very well with the customers well it fit it fit traditional airlines were focusing on the luxury <coughs> primary airport high quality meals whereas budget airlines just focused on the low fares and some ancillary services and they give very less attention and investment to luxury primary airport and high quality meals some of them in fact stopped providing meals and later on they started giving meals for some additional cost and as a result of that a new market is being created in the process and now we know that the number of the travelers through the airways have increased a lot in india and because the the uh, the price of the air travel fell down by significant of course governments in the economy like in india government also plays played its role in making the air travel affordable but we nonetheless discount what budget airlines have done in terms of the value creation for the market. another example which uh, com and uh, mobon gave is about the formula 1 hotels these are the hotels which were mainly they are on the highways and the trailer driver and uh, uh, truck drivers were their main customers restaurant architecture reception lobby room size furniture and accessories comfort of bed cleanliness quietness and price these were factors identified to be relevant uh, for the value uh, for the customers what the formula 1 hotel did if their customers are the trailer drivers or the truck drivers do they expect great swimming swimming pool in the hotel or they will they go for a very sophisticated restaurant where they can get a large number of dishes certainly not for them most important things are comfort of bed cleanliness quietness and and the convenience of getting some quick meals when late night they arrive to those hotels so the formula 1 hotel followed this logic they reduced the cost on restaurant they provided a very basic kind of restaurant which would provide sandwiches and some simpler stuff in fact they installed the sandwich vending machine uh, they could sell sir the coffee or tea or the sandwiches they gave much less attention to the architecture reception lobby they gave same at some attention to the room size and the furniture and they focused most on the comfortable bed and cleanliness as a result of that customers found it very valuable and uh, organization created value for the customers and for themselves <coughs> so this is one way one another way of systematically approaching the value innovation in the organizations people can look at what are the what are the factors which create value for the customers we need to study those factors and the different value curves have to be drawn in comparison to my organization how my competitors are giving those giving those values when we draw the comparative value curve we can identify where the value innovation can be done and those value innovations can be incorporated systematically and uh, value can be created for the customers which in turn result value being created for the organization 
out of this whole process undefining the factors making the changes convincing the top management for these changes etc what are what do you think is the first most difficult step in identifying in this whole process identifying the factors actually the customer inside is the most valuable why it is so yeah because many times customers themselves cannot articulate what they need what they expect it requires a deep intimate understanding of the customer on the part of the marketer to identify the real valuable factors and once the valuable factors are identified and once it is identified where we are going to focus upon we can redraw the value curve redrawing the value curve means reducing something those th those factors that could be reduced well below the industry standard those things can be reduced something can be eliminated the factors which should be eliminated that industry has taken for granted or not valuable anymore then we need to also create the factors that that should be created that industry has never offered and raising the factors that could be raised well above the industry standard identify value create value and capture value that is the essence of the kims and uh, kims and uh, mobons uh, framework of the value innovation based on these logics the blue ocean strategy and red ocean strategy logic is built i hope you must have studied that in your strategic managing strategic management strategic marketing case the basis of the blue ocean and red ocean strategy is the is is the process of redrawing the value so i will end this example i will end this session with one example of a retail bank which started in a market which already had more than 95% coverage of the banking population that market is the us market and the bank is the commerce bank <coughs> commerce bank is started in usa in many states of the usa when there was more than 95% population which was the banked population which already had the bank account now you can imagine how conventionally difficult it is to start a bank which already has so very so widespread bank population they looked at the value innovation and identified that the timing and the personal interaction are the most important factors they are going to focus on so they decided that the banking hours will be longest in whichever market they will operate so the banking hours in most of the branches were from 8 am to 8 pm because they identified that as one of the most important factors customer value they need to have bank when they have time generally most of the banks were would be operating where customers don't have time they are busy with their professional lives so this is factor number 1 having a time duration which is longest in the wherever market whichever market they are operating and the second thing was the human service the service with a smile when you have these thing as a factors of the value creation naturally you may not get the most talented people available in the market so they have identified some of the very innovative ways of attracting people to join the commerce bank one of the attractive way one of the interesting ways is that they have given the invitation cards to their employees to be given to anyone through whom they get the exceptional service so if you are a commerce bank employee if you get an exceptional service in the restaurant and if you are carrying the card that invitation card you can get give this invitation card to the person who has provided you the exemplary service which will would have invitation to consider to join commerce bank so this is one of the ways they have extended their uh, the pool talent pool secondly if you have people who are willing do those who have the natural tendency to serve a smiling ways of providing service and willingness to serve 
the longest hours possible they may not be the most qualified people they may not be the academically most talented people available in the market so they they were okay with that to cope up with to this challenge they have made their products easiest in terms of explanation they make a simple cards to be given to their employees and with those simple cards they were able to explain even the so called complex products to their customers if after the class you check the website of the commerce bank the commerce bank website also is very very simple and very simple to navigate it doesn't throws the information about what all these banks offers it simply asks what are you looking at and accordingly it helps the customers to navigate so the talent the people who have natural tendency to serving serving with their smile for the longer hours they may not be the academically most talented people but they were helped by simple processes and the product descriptions and in variable commerce bank operates they give the worst return they give the worst rate for the uh, for the deposits they give worst rate for the loans by policy but commerce bank is a success story it's not a failure story so this is another example where they focused on what is being valued by the customer and they just focused on that you must have studied a generic strategy in the strategic management course and the generic strategy is cost leadership differentiation and niche no player can operate on all the three things it is very difficult almost impossible to operate as a cost leader who has a great differentiation who can also serve the niche i cannot think about a company other than google which has to a great extent been successful in pursuing all the three types of strategy for most of the companies they have to trade off where to trade off where to make changes that's what we looked at in the today's session in the today's session we looked at change is inevitable we looked at technology technological factors societal factors demographic factors are constantly redefining the business space and the organizations it has a inevitable impact on the business models and the work preferences of the employees so the change that change is inevitable but there are two concepts which we looked at today can be very helpful to lead the change process more systematically one is looking at the competitive advantage and the uh, life cycle of the competitive advantage we looked at the concept of transient competitive advantage no competitive advantage is permanent so how to sail through the transient competitive advantage we looked at some of the features and how to assess whether we are ready for the transient uh, transient competitive advantage or not and towards the end we looked at the value innovation is another systematic way and based on the examples of uh, formula 1 hotel body shop and the low budget airlines we conveyed the idea about the value innovation so a change management process is focused on the customers first it is focused on the external customers and to enable that change we need to focus on the internal customers one very important factor which is redefining the business field and it is going to redefine in a more and more strong way is need for sustainable development there is a growing inequality in terms of the economic natural environment and meaninglessness and these things are also redefining the business model so as we looked at how technology and the focus on the customer value is redefining the business model and that is the first lesson about the change management in the next session we look at how the sustainability principles the need for sustainable development is redefining the business model